Sup guys, a friend of mine told me I need to open my eyes more, so I'm going to open my Asian eyes. Ooh, I feel my eyeballs. Interesting. So, first of all, if you like using the word gaijin, please go ahead and use it. I'm not the word police here, you know, I just wanted to explain why I feel deeply uncomfortable with these words. And I think there are two main reasons. First, over differentiation. So, what does gaijin mean? Well, the textbook definition is foreigners. But if you pay attention, in reality, people don't always use the words this way. You know, for example, when Japanese people go to Europe, they still call the local people gaijin. Isn't that strange? Because if they are in Europe, they are the foreigners. Another example is that if you are a white person and become a Japanese citizen, the chances are Japanese people will still call you gaijin, even though technically you are Japanese. So, the thing is, gaijin is used like an ethnicity, so I think it overemphasizes the difference between Japanese people and non-Japanese people, and I sometimes have the impression that Japanese people think of gaijin as almost like a different species or something, and I don't think that's right. And on the flip side, Japanese people tend to think that they are uniquely different from other people, which I don't think is true. The second reason is implied hierarchy. Am I still opening my eyes? Mm. Oh, it hurts. So, implied hierarchy. Again, this is a deviation of the official definition, but gaijin doesn't always mean non-Japanese people. For example, once I was talking to this guy and he was talking about gaijin girls. And I asked, so what about Filipino women? And he said, oh no, I mean western girls. Well, the thing is, gaijin often only means western people, so let's just google gaijin and see what happens. Okay, so guys... So what do we see here? Um, ooh, Obama, that's interesting. But yeah, you know, there's a lot of white people here, mostly. Well, it's, it might not be safe for work, I'm sorry. When they say gaijin, they often really mean white people. And this is a very inaccurate representation of the world population. You know, more than 60% of the people on earth are classified as Asian. Uh, there are more Asian people than all other races combined. And you know what it reminds me of? Hollywood films. You know, the world of gaijin is like Hollywood films, which are very racially biased. And the thing is, the word gaijin is totally unnecessary in Japanese. You know, if I talk about Western people, I could just say obejin. And if I talk about non-Japanese citizenship, I could just say gaikokuseki. And if I talk about Portuguese people, I could just say portugalzin. What up Portugal? Tudo bem? Well, I don't think the word gaijin is always discriminatory, but personally, I don't use the word because to me, the world is a very diverse place, you know, with many different people, but we are also quite similar in many ways. And my view is largely incompatible with this narrow binary differentiation that the word gaijin represents. So what do you think of the word gaijin? I know you guys have opinions on this, so let me know in the comment section. So, Mibo Mibo says, this is good to learn some vocabulary. Yeah, music. I always listen to music when I learn a new language because it's a very good way of learning vocabulary or like, you know, uh, uh, becoming familiar with how the language sounds and etc etc. But, I have a warning, because some J-pop songs, the lyrics don't really make sense at all. Because sometimes I see people posting stuff online saying, what do these lyrics mean? I mean like in, in Japanese, and I read it and I'm like, they don't really make sense at all. I think this 
kind of, let's say, symbolic lyrics were quite common back in the 90s, but I still come across incomprehensible lyrics today. I remember listening to this、uh, Carrie Pam. Pam, Pam, Pam <laughs> I can't pronounce this. Carrie Pam. Pam okay, but you know, you, you know who I'm talking about.、Uh, so、uh, I, rem- I remember listening to one of her songs and it, it was very interesting, but you know, the lyrics were kind of like it didn't.、Uh, it was. Phonetically interesting, but you know, the meaning is not clear at all. And Bitter SC33 says, This is great, I love it. My mom and I watched it together and we laughed so hard. You guys,、uh, this comment makes me very happy. Well, like she watched my video with her mom. It is. Just amazing.、Um, okay, again, I assuming, I'm assuming she's a girl, but I kind of think she is. And the m a y b a r s says, I don't know if it appears a lot in J pop, but Shogunai definitely represents the Japanese state of mind to me. That's very true. Shogunai is a very, very typically Japanese word, but I don't think. There are many J pop songs that use this word because it's just too depressing. Oh, by the way, Shogunai means something like, oh, actually, it's kind of hard to translate. But it's when you give up something, saying that, you know, yeah, it's just the way it is. And I think.、Uh, The other reason why it doesn't appear in J pop a lot is that、uh, this word isn't very emotional, you know. I think popular music tends to be quite emotional. Stuff like, oh, it's a miracle, or yeah, I will protect you, or let's see the fireworks together. It's very emotional, but Shogunai is like, you know, yeah, whatever, just let it go. And this guy also says, I'm assuming he is a guy, but correct me if I'm wrong. But he says, Awesome! I guess pop music is as bad all over the world. Well, I. There was a phase when I was like, Yeah, popular music is just too cheesy and not my taste, not worth listening. But. These days, I like cheesy, cliche kind of pop music a lot. So it's not like I listen to it all the time, but I don't mind it at all. And yeah, I enjoy a lot of cheesy stuff that many people don't necessarily approve of. So it's a bit like my guilty pleasure. Hey, are you still listening to me? You know. I'm gonna tell you my secrets. I really enjoy making this audio only part. You know, probably more than the actual video. I think it, it might be more like my style. If I film myself, I,、uh, I'm like, you know, oh, is my facial expression alright? Or, like, you know, is my face presentable enough? Or, like, you know, am I opening my eyes and stuff like that? But if I'm just talking, I can concentrate on what I say. By the way, in addition to what I said in the video, if you are Japanese and only speak Japanese, the way you See, the world is very limited because all the information you get is most likely from the TV. And if you read a lot, I think it's better. But if you don't read, only watch TV,、uh, your knowledge of the world is very, very limited. And again, unless you live in a very international、uh, Place, which is kind of rare, you almost never meet anybody outside Japan except from maybe Chinese or Korean people. And 
I mean, Japan, China, Korea, we are all East Asia, so we look quite similar. And I think that's one one of the reasons why, like, you know, white people, black people, Japanese people tend to see them very differently. You know, they tend to think they are more different than they actually are. And that the word gaijin is kind of like, you know, uh, in line with this very limited view of the world that Japanese people have. But if you travel a lot, uh, you know, l- l- live in other countries, you will learn that there are many different people in the world and just because they look kind of similar doesn't mean they have similar cultures or uh, anything. Even uh, amongst Asian people, we are we have a lot of different Asian countries with very different uh, political systems or cultures, religions. So, so there's no place for gaijin in my vocabulary. Often, what some people themselves use the word gaijin, especially when they live in Japan for a long time. But sometimes it sounds as if they are also kind of differentiating themselves from. Japanese people. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but I prefer different kind of classification. So, well, actually, it's interesting because I, I also don't use the word foreigner a lot, except when I am a foreigner. So, if I go outside Japan, I sometimes call myself a foreigner. So it's kind of. Maybe it's similar. Well, thanks for listening. Oh, I have some exciting news. I, I've, I've written a book, and the book is about、uh, intercultural dating in Japan, and it's almost done.、Uh, I just have to form up them. I've in- interviewed a lot of people, very interesting stories. Actually, I had to read my book over and over again because you know, I have to proofread it or edit it. Maybe like you know, 10 times, 20 times, a lot. But every time I kind of get lost in the book because their stories are so interesting. And yesterday I, I was reading my book just to make sure that everything was okay on the train. And I missed my station because I was so into the book. I will let you guys know when it's available. Well. Well, I guess that's it for today, and thanks for listening, and see you later. Ciao, ciao.